Welcome to another episode of Metal, almost knocked my glass over there, <laughs> and Beer. So a little change of scenery, I'm usually shooting these from my studio upstairs, my recording studio, but I figured, hey, it's beautiful out here today. Let's do this outside. So anyway, I am drinking a new beer for the very first time today. And again, I've never tried this before and I actually saw it in the grocery store. Uh, real quick, I wasn't actually gonna buy beer today because I've got plenty of beer in the fridge, but I saw this. Yingling's Hershey Chocolate Porter. <laughs> so naturally, and just out of curiosity, I had to pick it up. Obviously, I love chocolate and beer, so, you know, this is kind of a win-win. But let's see how this tastes. Uh, again, I've never tried this before, so I'm drinking this for the very first time on camera right here on the Metal and Beer channel. And like an amateur, I'm having a tough time. There we go. <laughs> Taking this cap off here. So let's give this a pour. Again, it's Yingling's Hershey's Chocolate porter i almost said stout i don't know why but anyway wow nice and dark as you'd expect now i think i've had yingling beer on here before on metal and beer before i can't quite remember how to go back and look uh so i may have given a little bit of history but just real quick so yingling started out first of all they're america's first brewery and they started out uh by a german family and they've been around since like 1829. And an interesting fact about Yingling real quick is, and this is a question that I got the answer from their website, is what did they do during the prohibition? So interesting enough, they actually produced beer, but they did what's called almost beer and the alcohol content was only 0.5%. So apparently there was a very minimal percentage of alcohol you could have in a beverage. So that's how they got by. And I think they started some kind of dairy around that time as well. So anyway, that's an interesting fact about the Yingling Brewery here. And they're based out of Pennsylvania. And actually Hershey's, there's a little town, if you don't know this, there's a little town in Pennsylvania called Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, my wife and I actually drove through there a few years ago, going up there to visit some family. Uh, we took a, another little route, a different route than we normally take. And uh, yeah, we drove right through Hershey. The problem with Hershey, Pennsylvania, as cool as it is, Everything's pretty much shut down on Sunday, and that's when we happen to be driving through, so we'll have to go back. Anyway, just some little facts. So let's taste the Hershey's Chocolate Porter. Cheers. I'm not gonna actually hit the camera with this because I'll knock it over. Mmm. Definitely malty, and you can <laughs> get the chocolate aroma as well. man. Now I kind of expected the chocolate maybe to be a little bit more dominating. Surprisingly, it's not, it's, it's not quite as dominating as I thought it might be. And that's actually a good thing because sometimes when you, sometimes you can overpower a beer with a flavor. And when you're advertising something like Hershey's, cause you know, Hershey's, Hey, I like Hershey's chocolate. When you're, when you're putting something like that on a beer, I kind of sometimes expect it to be a little bit overpowering as I've tasted uh, other beers like that in the past that have like these, you know, dominating flavors. But this is surprisingly balanced, which again, is a good thing. I will say now after that second sip, and you guys know this, usually you get more of that taste after that second sip. Things start to kind of settle in. You know, you've got that initial initial sip on the palate there, but then as it's settling in, you take that second taste, you start to get really more of that flavor. And of course, this is a definitely a full-bodied beer. So I can tell you this about, uh, about the Hershey's Porter here, is you do get the malts that hit you first. And then kind of as an undertone and, and kind of like an aftertaste, that Hershey's starts to sink in a little bit. The Hershey's doesn't really hit you right away, if that makes sense. I mean, you can tell that it's there, especially, you know, knowing what's on the bottle here. But if you didn't know that this beer was a Hershey's chocolate porter, then you'd be like, okay, well, this is definitely a chocolate porter, 
but again that malt flavor that malt hits you prior to that which again is a good thing mm. now here's the thing i don't know if the alcohol content's on here but i did read it online it's under five percent i do know that again i don't think it's on the bottle here i want to say 4.7 or 4.2 but yeah i i know it's under five percent so it's definitely not strong in alcohol content which that's fine but yeah that's a good beer and again the chocolate's not overpowering it's very balanced full-bodied and it's very easy to drink i mean you could probably <laughs> you could probably go through a few of these and not even realize it because it's just a really nice dessert beer all right so cheers again yingling hershey's chocolate porter now we need to talk about metal on metal and beer so since we're drinking a dark beer let's talk about some a little bit darker metal if you will and i want to highlight a specific album by the band called evergrey uh Tom England is the front man, and I believe the founder of this band. And I really have a lot of admiration and respect for Tom because he's just a phenomenal musician and songwriter, singer, guitarist, all that good stuff. And uh, I don't know, this this sound that he's, he's created with the band Evergrey has been really its own subgenre of metal music. And they're kind of deemed as like a progressive slash gothic metal band. They are, they are from Sweden, so of course that kind of makes sense, you know, a lot of the darker metal bands are, are in that area of the world, which is really cool. But anyway, the album I want to highlight was, I believe, their fifth studio album, and it was released in 2004, and it's called The Inner Circle. And actually, I was just listening to the first track on that, A Touch of Blessing, and I was listening to that on the way to the grocery store when I found this beer. <laughs> so it all kind of like coincided here uh, by accident or by fate, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so the album kind of kind of deals lyrically with like religion and cults and there's even some, some themes of child abuse in that as well. So it is a, a very dark album. It's got a dark uh, undertone to it and the lyrics are, are very powerful in that album and this album along with his album after that which is called Torn both of those albums they're, those are probably my two favorite ever great albums of course he's released several since then uh, but this is how I discovered Evergrey many, many years ago. You know, I discovered them by, I think I first heard the Torn album, and then I went back and listened to The Inner Circle, which is what we're highlighting in this video here. And he's just got, again, such a, you know, Tom, he's just got such a unique sound and unique writing style for metal music. There's not any other band that sounds like them. You know how a lot of metal, uh, and I'm not I'm not downing metal by any means because I love metal, obviously metal and beer here, but a lot of metal music can sort of run together after a while. It's like, okay, you listen to a cer certain type of band, it's like, okay, well, now I've heard them all kind of thing. And I don't mean for that to sound negative, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes uh, there's just that, that theme. It's like, okay, I'm kind of tired of this and I want something a little new. Well, Evergrey is that something new. Again, there's not any other metal band that sounds like them. And for certain, they obviously were not trying to go after someone else's sound either, which again, that's one of those things that I admire and respect about Tom England, the front man for Evergrey. So yeah, Evergrey, The Inner Circle, really, really cool album. And that first opening track, it, it really builds up. So again, it's called A Touch of Blessing. Make sure you listen to that track. I'll put a link to that band I always try to find the video of the song or a song on the album I'm talking about, and I'll put that link in the YouTube description. And of course, I'll link to Yingling as well. Uh, by the way, this beer again, going back to the Hershey's Chocolate Porter, this is a seasonal beer. I believe it's only available through uh, October through February. Uh, I'm filming this in December of 2020, so I'm really glad I got my hands on this today because it looks like I only have like two and a half more months to <laughs> to drink this stuff before it's out, you know, again, a seasonal. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the Metal and Beer show today, and we will talk again on the next video.